Hello, my name is Matan, and in this video, I'll give an overview on IDE Plus, our PC Suite programming environment. In this tutorial, we'll be covering the basics. What is a user program? A Jito user program language? Basic concepts? And starting a project. I'll be using an AGC300 controller for this demo, and of course, any Ajito controller is IDE Plus programmable. So what is a user program exactly? A user program is a piece of code, a script, that runs your system. Whether the controller is running autonomously, or whether it's receiving commands from an outside source. At the end of this video, we'll give a simple example of code and run it on a controller. In later videos, we'll run other pieces of code demonstrating how to use different features in the IDE+. So let's talk a bit about the syntax. The Ajito user program language is a high-level language with easy-to-learn syntax. We can use all the standard operators, mathematical, bitwise, logical. The flow control statements are similar to C, while, for, switch cases, etc. We also have very easy to use snippets in case you forget the syntax. And our IDE Plus has an autocomplete feature. This means that for each keyword or control flow statement, such as while, once you start writing them, an autocomplete will pop up giving an explanation and showing the correct syntax. Ajito can also provide an API for the .NET framework, which allows the user to interface with Ajito controllers using compatible programming languages, such as C Sharp, C++, and Visual Basic. In this part of the video, we'll go over some basic concepts that might not be as widely known. Tasks, threads, and dynamic versus static memory allocation. Tasks. When you download the user program to the controller, you can essentially download many sub-programs that can run in parallel, at different speeds. These are called tasks. You can call each of these tasks independently from the others. For example, you can call a task that performs a homing operation, and you can continuously run a task that runs safety checks in the background, etc. It's simply an organized and more time-efficient method to help you run your system, instead of including everything in one piece of code that runs all the time. Threads. Since we're running these subprograms or tasks in parallel, the processing time is divided into threads. The controller can run up to eight threads in parallel. So when you want to run a certain task, you also need to give it the thread number you wish to run it on, like so a prog run 3, 5. As a side note, because of the way our command interpreter works, when addressing keywords, an axis, A, B, C, must be stated at the beginning. This is true whether the keyword is axis related or not. So, A prog run 3, 5 means run task number 5 on thread number 3. Don't worry, all of this is documented in our manual, I'll also make a more detailed video on this topic, and you can always go to help, docs, and search for prog run. Threads are run at different priorities, making them run at different speeds. Priority number one being the fastest, and number 10 being the slowest. Static versus dynamic allocation. When defining a variable, the variable is stored in one of our arrays called gen data. This allocation to the gen data array is done either dynamically and can change as you add variables or statically, meaning you define a specific cell in the gen data array for this variable. Why would you care about this? Here is an example. When sampling a variable using an external application, let's say some application you wrote, you can't use the variable name because the variable name exists only in the IDE plus world. You have to reference that variable using gen data. And for you to be sure that a certain variable is always defined as, for example, cell number 800 in the gen data array, you can define that variable with a static allocation, like so. As a simple project example, I'm going to connect a LED to one of the outputs of our controller and make it blink. Using this example, we'll see how to write code in our IDE Plus and also how to debug our code. All right. Let's finally open the IDE Plus and start writing some code. 
My Ajito PC suite is already connected to the controller. So let's go to Program and IDE Plus. Let's click on Project and then on New Project. I'll call this project IDE Plus Overview. And we can see we're creating a .puj file, which is a project file. Once we click on Create, we see we have a template and two more files were created. .pup, which is for the user program, and .puh, which is the header file. In the template created, the header file is included, and some information about this file. If I change something in the information lines, click on Debug and Compile, we can see this information in the Info window. Here, we have the main task. Like I said before, we can have many tasks, but the main task, or task number one, is unique for two reasons. One, it's the only task that can auto-execute on power on using this keyword. And two, it's the only task that will be interrupted in case an event function is triggered. So if you're using event functions, task number one must always be running. Okay, so we wanna make a digital output turn on and off repeatedly. Let's create a while loop using our snippet. Let's hover over the while to see what's the correct syntax. Okay, I want this to run all the time, so I'm just gonna write one for the condition. Now, I'm gonna connect the LED to digital output number one, and I need to set it to a source type because I'm gonna be the current source. On this controller, we have eight digital outputs, and there's one keyword that entails the statuses of all these outputs, the out port, where bit zero corresponds to output one, bit one corresponds to output two, etc. So if all eight outputs were on, the out port would be two to the power of eight. But since I only want to turn output one on, I'm gonna set bit zero of the out port to one without affecting any of the other outputs. I'll do that by performing an or operation and I'll do an and operation to turn that bit off. Now we'll add some delay between the on and off using the keyword wait time. And we also need to change the output type to be a source type. We can do that using the keyword type with the same logic as dOutPort. I'll write this outside the while loop since it only needs to run once. Okay, let's compile and debug it. We can see it compiled and downloaded successfully to the controller. Now we're in debug mode. In this mode, we can advance in single steps, we can add breakpoints, hover over variables to see their values, and many more features that I won't get into in this video. Okay, let's run it and see if it works like intended. Let there be light and let there be darkness. It's working. Great. All right, in the next videos, we're gonna cover all the features that were mentioned. We'll go over examples for functions, event functions, running different threads at different priorities, and more. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.